Welcome to the first video of our tutorial series on our QGIS plugin Geodata to EnvyMet. My name is Helge Simon and in this multi-part video series we will use the QGIS plugin to export EnvyMet model areas, to perform advanced microclimate simulations and to visualize the simulation results in the context of GIS. In the first video we will take a look at the plugin and its graphical user interface. We will set up a sample project and we'll organize the geodata for the upcoming videos. For those of you who are not too familiar with QJS, QJS stands for Quantum Geographic Information System, it is an easy to use free and open source software that allows you to visualize, analyze and manage geodata. If you haven't already, head over to QJS.org, their website, and download it for free and familiarize yourself with the software. There's plenty of learning material out there, so it's easy to get a hang of it. Okay, so once you installed QJS, QJS always comes with two versions. Um, so there's one version, which is the latest one, and there's another one with the, it's called the long-term release. And for most of the cases, I'd recommend using the long-term release because it's more stable. In any case, to install plugins, you head to the um, plugins in the, in the main menu and manage and install plugins. So a new window will open and there you enter NV yeah, for NVMet and you will see the plugin Geodata to NVMet. I have it already installed and now there's also an upgrade available. Um, so typically it should say install plugin here and um, or upgrade in case you already have it installed and there's an upgrade available. So do check occasionally if there's uh, upgrades and simply upgrade it or, in the or for the first time install it. Once it's installed, um, there's a new icon here in the in the toolbar, but it's also accessible through the menu and then the, um, the option Geodata to EnvyMet, and you can open it here. So once it's open, you will get greeted with a home screen. So there's lots of different informations about the plugin, so what it can be used for, um, also what is EnvyMet, and there's also a small or short documentation and a link to it here. There is some prerequisites, um, which we're going to talk about in the later stages of the video today and also in the, the other videos following. Um, so I don't want to talk about it uh, here too much in detail. In general, the plugin is, uh, follows the credo of EnvyMet that is basically that it runs in three steps. So the first step would be to digitize your model area to yeah, set up the simulation. The second one would be to run the simulation and the third to visualize them. So for the first part to digitize the model, um, this tab is should be used. So export GIS layer to EnvyMet. And um, it is it has two sections. So the top is called Geodata and there is different information that can be exported to EnvyMet. So this would be buildings, informa building information, surface, vegetation, terrain, pollutants, sources and also receptors. And in the gridding option, the first option, you define, okay, what uh, area of the whole data set should be exported to EnvyMet, which should be the resolution horizontally, what should be the resolution vertically. There are also additional gridding options, which we're gonna, gonna get into later. Uh, for the buildings, you select the layer that stores the building information. You select the field where the building top is stored, and you also see the units here. So it's um, expected in meters. You can also use static values. So if you don't have the information, you can say, okay, all the buildings should have uh, 15 meters. Uh, the same goes for the building bottom. You can have a building name. So this would be just a, a string. And then uh, you have the field for building walls called NVIDs. We're gonna talk about these NVIDs at a later stage more in detail, but it basically links the um, information of a different, of a specific building to the uh, building materials that we use in EnvyMet. So building materials have d different properties, for example, um, emissivity or albedo or stuff like that. And since we don't want to store all this in, in QGIS, um, we can just link it to a database um, field in EnvyMet and then the EnvyMet knows, okay, it's this specific brick wall with an albedo of 0 0.3 or something. So these are the data, data, database IDs where um, NVID um, is indicated here. 
So the same goes for surfaces. For surfaces, you have two options. You can have it uh, stored in a vector layer and export it, or you can have it in a raster layer and export it. Uh, we will do this um, uh, also uh, with different uh, layer options, so that you, you see how it's done. For vegetation, there are simple plants and 3D plants, so basically the same you know um, maybe already from, from spaces or mond. So, um, two different uh, types of vegetation, so simple plants for, for vegetation that has no verti or vertical characteristics or simple, uh, is, uh, simple a co simply a column, so maybe hedges or grass, and 3D plants would be trees with a distinct ground layer. Then terrain, obviously, um, and sources and pollutants and also receptors are options here. Okay, so on the bottom there is a summary, so it tells you, okay, which um, information will be exported and you define the um, the path and also you see the progress of the export uh, from the geodata to the Android model area. The next two tabs basically are from the for the simulation part. So Envimet of course just it needs more than just the model area but it also needs the information okay about the the microclimate for example about the climate outside the model area the conditions of the air that comes into that flows into the model. So this can be set using different meteorology me methods, simple forcing for example, and uh, yeah, you can define the air temperature, min, max, the year relative humidity, you can also use a full forcing or cyclic forcing, and all these different options, the date when the simulation should, uh, should be run, for how long, name of the simulation, uh, you link uh, also to the model area file that we will export. Um, this whole dialogue resembles very closely the Envy Guide. So if you're, uh, if you know the Envy Guide, you will this will look quite familiar to you. If you don't know the Envy Guide, um, check out the videos about it, in the Getting Started the Started videos, for example, and uh, they will get they will get uh, more into detail about all the different options here. Then the Start Envymat Simulation button. So. You can uh, basically start the simulation if Envimet is installed on this PC uh, from here. You simply select the project folder, you se select the simulation file, and you can start the simulation. The simulation will run independently of QGIS, so you can close it or continue working with it um, because it will run it in its own instance. In the second to last tab is basically the visualization part, so you can visualize your simulation results here. Um, which would be uh, once the simulation is run, you get uh, you can select a file and you can select which variable you want to load and you can add it to the map and then yeah adjust it create a nice layout for it to visualize the simulation of your of your uh, simulation results. The last step would be a lookup table. So uh, the database lookup is something that if Envimet is installed, you get in information about which materials. Um, you want to or you can use for specific uh, properties. So, for example, wall and roofs. All these materials um, you can uh, you can define your buildings with, or your walls and roofs with. So, for example, if your um, building is made out of a concrete wall, so then this would be the Envimet ID that links all the physical properties to it. We'll get to this at the, in the next video, uh, but just so that you saw this tab here. Okay, so this would be the quick overview about the, the graphical user interface um, of, the, of the plugin. Okay, so now that we checked out the graphical user interface, um, let's start with the first part of the tutorial. And this would be loading different data types into QGIS uh, to prepare them for uh, the later stages where we want to export it to a model area. And um, if you are already familiar with QGIS and different data types, raster data, text files, um, vector data, etc., um, then you can skip this video and head to the second video already, uh, where we have the data prepared and then uh, actually export it to an Envimet model area file. Um, but if you are uh, not too familiar with importing different data sets, um, they then, then stay here and uh, follow me in the tutorial. Um, so obviously when we want to 
import geodata or use geodata to run NVMED simulations, we need geodata. And one way to get geodata um, is using the open data initiatives of urban areas. And basically all around the world, the urban areas um, provide open data to very different quality and different extent. But for our uh, purposes, we want to use the open data initiative of the city of New York City. And for that, we just open our browser um, and look for open data New York City and use this data in our sample project. So uh, here we have the New York City open data website. And when we click on it, um, we can start searching for open data. So f as a microclimate model, the three major um, parameters defining an urban area would be A, buildings, B, um, the surface types, so the land cover, and see the the trees, yeah, because obviously the vegetation makes a big difference on, in urban heat mitigation. So we can look if the city of New York provides this data for us to download, and uh, we can, uh, for example, search for buildings. And luckily, we see that there is a data set here. Uh, about the building footprints, and it's also a map data set. So it has a, it's not just data, it's geolocation, geolocated data, uh, where we know which building footprint is where, and there's also lots of, uh, lots of other uh, data in there. So we click on it, um, and we see, okay, there's a big data set with all the different buildings that are um, in, the, in, the, in, in New York City. And if we zoom in, we see that there's not just point features, oh, but there's also polygon features of the building outlines. Um, and when we click on export, we have the possibility to download this geospatial data in different file formats, a shapefile, GeoJSON, KMZ, KML, and original, whatever that means. Um, so it's basically the data, how they store it. And this would be most likely the, the quickest way to download it because uh, they, it doesn't have to be converted on the server side. So when we click on original, we get the download link and it is, uh, it is downloading for us. Okay, so while the buildings are downloading, we can uh, also take a look at the different parameters uh, that we're interested in. That would be land cover, the second one. So information about the surfaces. So information about the surfaces, um, can be found in the form of land cover raster data. So while the buildings were um, were vector data, the land cover data seems to be raster data. So there are different data sets available, one si six inch resolution version, um, but there's also a land cover raster data in three feet resolution and three feet basically is one meter more or less. So this is uh, quite a high resolution already um, because you're not gonna run animal simulations uh, higher in a higher resolution than one meter. Typically it's two meters or uh, maybe two to five, six, seven meters in a, a horizontal resolution. So um, downloading the six inch resolution, yeah, well, you will have to, you know, it's a big data set. So uh, the three feet um, resolution is enough for us. And what we also see in the description here that there are seven land covered glasses that have been mapped. And so it's the pixel values. The pixel value of one stands for a tree canopy, of two for a grass or shrub, three for bare uh, earth, four water, five buildings, six roads, seven for paved surfaces. So if I click on raster data, on the land cover raster data, I again get the download link and can download it onto my PC. While this is downloading again, I uh, search for the third um, object that is important, that would be trees. And here, the Open Data Initiative of New York City um, gives me different uh, results. So first of all, it gives me uh, 2015 street tree uh, census data, and again, as a map form. So this is actually great. So if I open this in a new tab, you see it is very similar it's um, to the uh, to the buildings so it's vector data and they already share a geolocation and if i go to export you see the familiar uh, data types uh, that i can download it in just like the the building information and this would be the way to go if you have this available uh, yeah you're you're done you can just download it in any of these forms to to open it directly in uh, qgis 
Uh, but for the sake of um, yeah, demonstration, I'd like to download it uh, not in geolocated data already, but maybe in, in a form of a data set, because this is also quite common for, for urban areas to provide them only in, uh, in the form of a table. So you see here, there's a table form and every line is basically a tree and there's different information about the tree. Is it alive? How is its condition? Uh, what species is it Yeah, in Latin and in, in common, so in English in this case. And there's also a geo information in there, but it's not stored as a geolocation data set, d data format. So there's latitude and longitude. So there is the geolocation there, but it's just a text file. And obviously uh, using a GIS, we can use this data. And this is one of the great features um, for um, when using QGIS, because you have access to all the different functions to load this kind of data, to yeah, to to alter it, to uh, to cut, to uh, do the all the geo processing tools that that QGIS comes with. So when we click on export here, we download the comma separated values. So this is just a text file that contains this um, yeah this table that you saw the preview um, on this web page before. So we download this data too, and while all this data is downloading, we start preparing our project. Okay, like any project, we uh, start uh, by defining it in the workspace area. So an Envimet project is always configured in, in the workspace and we can do so by uh, creating a new project and for that we need a name. So let's call it QGIS tutorial and do the same with the, the we want to have the folder in the same uh, name. So this would be the project name and this would be the, the name of the folder that is being created and our workspace would be on the D drive in the folder and the projects. And for it, I want to use a project database. This doesn't ne necessarily have to be, but um, using the project database, all the data items that we might want to change, they will only be available in this, um, in this folder for this project. So they will not be globally available um, then, for example, when you use a user database. So uh, we click on create and it will create a new folder called uh, QGIS tutor in the, in, in the project folder, in the workspace folder. And when I check it, so I have it here, um, then this is the folder that has been created, QGIS tutor. And um, I want to add the data that we downloaded in the download folder. We downloaded these three files, so the, the CSV file for the, for the trees. I want to place it there and I want to also uh, export or um, yeah, unzip uh, these files of the tree data, of the land cover data and the, the building data uh, here. But since it is uh, not just one file, uh, but many files um, in, inside these zip files. So this, for example, is a shape file we downloaded. So this was the, the vector data of the buildings. It's not just one file um, I, and I don't want to have a mess, lots and lots of different files in here. I create a new folder and call it build and extract the data into there. And I want to do the same for the land cover data. So I also create a new folder LC and the land cover data comes as an IMG file. So this is a raster data file and I want to have this data ex um, extracted uh, into this folder. Then it has been extracted. And now that the data is stored in these two folders and in, in the, the, the tree data is stored in this uh, CSV file, so basically, like I said, a text file, um, we can take a look at it in QGIS. So in QGIS, I, I start a new project and um, I navigate to the to the data where I stored it in NV projects and then there's the folder QGIS tutor and there are the different information. So there's two shape files actually there's there's the building shape file for the building outlines as a polygon and there's also the point features uh, where there's just a point where every poly, uh, building is but we need the, the polygons, obviously, because we want to have the outlines of the buildings. And um, when I uh, drag and drop it inside the map, you see that there is a ballpark transformation. This is something we need to take care of uh, in, a, in a second. So basically what it says is 
that uh, there is the one geographic coordinate sy uh, reference system and it has to be transformed uh, to another. So there might be some, uh, some tr yeah, transformation errors there. We can ignore it for now. Um, that we do the same with the land cover information and drag and drop it inside here. And when we look at the data, f so first of all, it's a very big area. Yeah. So this is, the, this is Manhattan, yeah, there is Brooklyn and Queens and stuff. And um, this is the raster data. And for each raster cell, there seems to be a different uh, color pixel index. So in the documentation, we saw that there is uh, one to seven. There, these indicate different land cover uh, classes. So one uh, is, uh, if I look at it again, uh, land cover at the metadata in metadata information, land cover. Then we see uh, we download this one. Then we see that one indicates a tree canopy, two grass and shrubs, three bare soil, four water, five buildings, six roads, and seven other paved surfaces. So it's seven different classes. You see that there is more pixel um, uh, band information there, but it's only to be interpreted from one to seven. And uh, yeah, so the colors yeah, basically indicate what it is. Red buildings, black would be streets, uh, paved would be, uh, would be this gray and darker green uh, canopy uh, of a uh, tree and grass and shrubs would be lighter green. Um, so this is in the information that is stored in the land cover um, data set. And the buildings, I place them on top, no, place them on top. Uh, you see that there is um, uh, lots and lots of different buildings, all uh, for the building footprints. And uh, the data that is stored in there, we can also take a look at it when we, as a vector data, it obviously has an attribute table. So once I open the attribute table, uh, you see that there is information stored there as well. It might take a while to open because it's a big data set. It's more than one million billions, uh, one million buildings in there. <coughs> so uh, it might take a while to, to open. So they are being loaded. And uh, just like for the, for the table of the trees, where they were not, uh, um, while they were not vector data stored as geodata, it obviously ha it was a table too. Our vector data of the buildings has information for every feature. So every line again is a building and every, all of these um, lines have some information to them. Are they constructed? What is their height? Um, stuff like this. And this is something that we need to take a look into. Obviously, the building height is important for a microclimate model. But um, <coughs> and in the introduction, you already saw that uh, we can enter the building height and we expect it in meters. But unfortunately, it is given in, in feet here. Yeah. Um, so we, there needs to be some conversion uh, to be done. And there's also no information about the building material. So it's not no information about the wall and roof material, stuff like that. So this is information we can add to our data set. Okay, so we looked at uh, the vector data of the buildings. We looked at the raster data of the land cover. And when I dr simply drag and drop the information of the CSV data of the table that has no um, geographic information uh, directly stored in, in, into it because it's just a text file. The, the tree data do not show up here. But there is a way, uh, a way to, to, to make them visible. And um, this is to import the layer by going to add, add layer, and then setting it to add delimited text layer. Because this is a delimited text layer where the different um, values are separated by a comma and we go to the um, to the file uh, enter it here and then we en enter the file format it already um, recognize it as a csv and uh, we know that it's different points so it's a point everywhere where there's a tree uh, there should be a point in our uh, map and uh, we have to now define uh, where is the x field so where is the the value for the this coordinate for the left right coordinate and for the up down coordinate it would be the y field and you can basically give give it every of these different um, different columns 
but uh, it already recognized that there is a column called longitude and then there is a column called latitude and these two actually do store these values and these values are stored in the format of geographic coordinates. Yeah, these are geographic uh, coordinates, 40 degrees um, north, uh, set point seven two three da -da -da degrees north, and uh, minus seven three point eight four four degrees uh, west. Yeah, so these will give information about where these points are to be set. And if we click on add, then um, QGIS will add them to the map. And this is one of the great features, like I said before, um, so that it uh, is possible to, to add text data into the map. And all the different information about the trees is also added um, in the same process. So there is something, again, that we need to talk about. So there is a transforma transformation happening because we are coming from WGS84, uh, so basically geographic coordinates, and we need to... Um, uh, yeah, convert it to uh, the current um, map projection and um, there is some accuracy um, uh, comes with it with different transformation um, techniques or methods and we simply choose the, the top one and say OK and then uh, the, transforma uh, the, the, the data has been added to our map as point data and this might again take a short while because it's not just one tree but yeah, millions of trees. Uh, because it's the whole area of New York City, which is quite large. Okay, now that has been added, if we zoom out, you see that there's lots and lots of points coming, and this would be the tree, the location of the tree, and inside this, um, uh, for every of these um, uh, points, there uh, is more information behind the point, so again, we can open the attribute table, and uh, see which data is stored. We already took a s short look on it um, in the website. So uh, like I said before, it is uh, the tree uh, in Latin name, the, the tree uh, common name, so in this case English, and um, now the data is um, being loaded. We can see what else has been stored. So here we can already see the, the so-called fields or columns in this case. This would be tree diameter at breast height, stump diameter. And once the data is loaded, um, we can see that for every tree, so each line has information about it. Yeah? So this tree, for example, has an ID and has a diameter at breast height of three and uh, fairly good health, is alive. And um, this would be the information about the species in Latin, the species in common. Um, language and um, yeah, maybe zip code, stuff like that has been stored. Um, and for trees, for example, we would have to store some more information about the NVID. So uh, we have to uh, yeah, link this specific tree to a NVMED ID. And we will do that in the, in, in the following videos. Um, so we are able to export this information to NVMED. But before we do this, we need to um, make something sure. And this is something that might be the most important prerequisite um, that it says in the in the tool here. That all layers should be projected in the same map projection system because we need to locate them relative to each other. So um, they should be uh, projected in the same map uh, projection system and it should be preferably UTM. So this is UTM is the world standard of um, map projections and uh, in our case, these this data is stored in geographic data, and these are stored in different local projection systems, but not in the um, not in the a not in the same uh, projection, and b not in the uh, preferred preferred way the UTM. So, in order to to do that, to transform all three data layers to um, UTM we first need to know, okay, New York City, in which UTM zone does New York lie? And for this uh, short web search is again helpful, UTM zone New York City, and uh, it will tell us that New York City, oh, I consent, and New York City, uh, the UTM zone would be 18, yeah? So the T is not important, yeah? The 18 is important. Um, and um, QGIS only works with uh, north and south, so 18N, because it's on the northern hemisphere, is the one we want to go with. So UGM zone 18N 
is the one uh, UTM SYN where we want to convert the data to. This would be done then by right clicking on the on the different data layers, in this case first the land cover data, save export, save as, then we need to define a file name and for that I again create a new folder LC U UTM and inside there I want to store the uh, GeoTIFF file as a data format and here's the important part so the coordinate, coordinate reference system currently it's uh, 2263 and I want to have it in the UTM system so I can search for UTM 18 and there's two available the standard world standard would be uh, using the WGS 84 UTM zone and this is 18N in this case and here in the preview you see okay that that fits so um, uh, we, we say okay do that and add it to map again this takes a short time until it's finished um, saving it and uh, then we will have the land cover data in the UTM coordinate reference system. Before it finishes, it again asks, okay, how should the which transformation should me method should be used? And again, we choose the top one, and the data is now being loaded into the map. So you see, this is the old data, and this is the new data. The, the color coding has not been transformed, but this is not a problem. We can do the color coding uh, later. So I can remove the um, non-UTM land cover data from the map, and this is the, the new um, UTM color, uh, the UTM uh, land cover data. So we do the same for the buildings, export, save feature as, and create a new folder called build UM, UTM, UTM, Again, we select a S3 shapefile. You can also select all the other different formats, but S3 shapefile is actually quite a good format uh, for it, um, since many people use it and it's uh, yeah, easy to to um, to understand. Um, so again, we use the the coordinate reference system of UTM18 and WGS UTM UTM18. We select it and uh, say OK. So now the buildings are being exported. Um, to the UTM coordinate reference system and uh, this will also take a short time until it's been added to the map. Okay, the task completed and the buildings are now in UTM form also added to the map. We can remove the buildings uh, that have, have been uh, not been in the UTM format, format and now we also do the same for the trees. So we do export, save feature as so you, you know the procedure right now, I think. So uh, we need a new folder, trees, UTM. And inside that folder, I want to have the trees stored. And I want to have the coordinate reference, reference system, UTM 18, so that all the three different layers will be in the same coordinate reference system. And once this data has been loaded, uh, we can proceed by also setting the project to this um, the, the, the project coordinate reference system to uh, UTM 18 so that we look at the data the same way that it is stored. Okay, now that the trees have been transformed too, I can remove the old ones and uh, have the, my data now in UTM, but like I said, I want to change the, the view of the data too, so I want to take a look at it from UTM 18N so that it matches, that all matches, um, that these three are stored in the same coordinate reference system as we are viewing the data. And this is now uh, the way to go forward. And the next step is basically optional because I don't want, want to uh, simulate the whole model area of New York City, that would be way too big. Um, I only want to simulate a small section and for that I want to reduce the data size because it always, like you see, it always takes a bit of time until all the data is loaded when I when I scroll or also when I go through the, the attribute tables. So uh, I want to reduce the data size to only a small sub area or a small area of interest I should say and um, for that um, we want to, for our sample case, I want to simulate part of the southern tip of um, Manhattan 
and uh, yeah I want to reduce the, the all the geodata um, to only this area of interest so I do that by first defining uh, a new vector layer to to cut the vector data and also the raster data to this area of interest so I don't have to have to work with a big data set all the time like I said this is an optional um, this is just an option you don't have to do this um, if you want to use the big data set then uh, feel free um, but in order to make it load faster I, I, I do it to reduce it to reduce the the, the file size and also the, to speed up the the loading so I create a new shape layer um, I call it maybe area of interest it's also in UTM um, the area of interest uh, should be 18n I do not need any information about it but it should be a polygon layer so uh, it is now here and in order not to over to draw over the other um, layers because it's on the top here I can also move it somewhere but then I don't see it anymore I just want to have a hollow um, I want to uh, visualize it as a hollow polygon just with a red outline and um, I, I want to add uh, a new polygon here so I click on the edit button and press uh, add polygon feature and here I, I use a special um, digitizing toolbar um, it's I think it's a great toolbar in order to draw rectangles and this uh, toolbar can be loaded by uh, clicking on view toolbars and it's called uh, the shape digitizing toolbar so um, by using by adding this toolbar you have these buttons here and I often use the rectangle from three points uh, oh. and um, first to define the baseline so this would be the baseline and then uh, I want to add oh this is a bit crooked um, maybe maybe more like this and this would be the area of interest um, and now I want to cut the data um, to only have the data available that is inside this um, this rectangle um, so I save it save the, the uh, polygon and now I can use the geoprocessing tools of vector um, and clip the data first maybe the building data to the area of interest and I make the can I either make it a temporary layer so then it would be temporary I have to restore it again or I can say okay t save it to file directly and yeah, let's make a new uh, new folder build oh, build UTM AOI for area of interest So this will only contain the buildings uh, in the UTM format that are within the area of interest. And the clip has, is finished. So you see that these are only the buildings that are in the area of interest. So I can get rid of the, all the buildings of New York City, but I only want to have these ones. And I do the same for the trees. Geoprocessing tools clip. Uh, trees are the input and the overlay would be a AOI and I want to save it uh, to file new name would be trees and yeah run it and now the trees are here it's some much less trees I can save lots of um, time there remove the layer containing all the trees and I do the same for the raster obviously because it's a raster I need to use the raster um, extraction tool so clip raster to extend input layer would be the, the raster layer and I can use the um, extend from the area of interest layer run it and oh here I didn't save it to file so I only um, select a temporary file so but I make it permanent by exporting it again and maybe into a new folder so that is the same for all of them UTM or AOI and call the GeoTIFF away in ATN, uh, 18N UTM zone and there it is and I can get rid of the temporary layer and the, the land cover data for the whole area Okay, and the last step of this video, I want to um, recolor code the um, the layer of the um, land cover. 
and I can do that by using the symbology and using a unique value. So I know that they go from one to oh, seven, yeah, one to seven, and one uh, was the tree canopy, so maybe a darker green. Two is the uh, grass or shrubs. Three is bare earth, so maybe a brownish tone. Four is the water features. Five would be buildings, typically red. Uh, six is roads, so maybe black. And seven, paved surfaces. And if I apply that, yeah, and disable the buildings, yeah, you see that all the information is back. You also see that there is white, yeah, so there's no uh, raster data here. And um, yeah, if we yeah, simulate parts of it, then we obviously have to take care of this no data information that is available or that is set here in this in these areas. But uh, this is something that we do in the following video. So this would be it for the first part of the uh, tutorial series. And today we took a look at the graphical user interface and um, yeah, headed through all the different tabs and did a quick tour of the data that can be entered and what can be done with the plugin. Then we downloaded publicly available geodata um, and loaded it into GIS. Um, we took a look at the information stored, so the attribute tables and the, the pixel values of the land cover data. And we reprojected, and this is maybe the most important part, reprojected all the data to a Cartesian projection system, in this case UTM, the preferred way for the, the world standard basically for geodata. Um, and in order to save the progress so far, we simply go to project, save as, and um, yeah, so save the QGIS file. Oh, so the, basically the file that, which, um, that, that contains the, the layer information and the order of the layers and the visualization in our um, base project folder. And let's call it QGIS and QGIS NYC for New York City. Save it and then we can uh, use it for, for the next part. And in the next part, um, we will take a closer look that is necessary to uh, use the data to create end model areas. And this is basically linking the information in the attribute table and the pixel values to end database IDs. I briefly talked about them already, but we'll uh, take a more detailed look in the next video. So thank you for watching and see you next time.